Hello friends. Hey, if you're like me, you've got a list of someday projects. You know those projects that are kind of big and daunting? You know you want to get them done someday, but right now you just don't quite know where to start. They seem kind of far off in the distance. Well, for me, a backpack like this was definitely on my list, and maybe it is for you too. So in this video, I really want you to download the free PDF pattern in the description so that we can build through this together. We're going to go step by step, and I promise it's not nearly as complicated as you might expect. So we'll walk through all the tools and materials you'll need, as well as all the techniques you need to put this together so you can have your very own backpack. I really hope this is a big help for you. Let's dive in. All right, so as I'm looking at my pattern pieces here, I notice they're pretty large. This is gonna take a lot of leather. So it's gonna take the better part of a side of leather probably. So. Um, I would I would choose something in the five to six ounce medium tempered range, and we'll we'll select some leather here together. I actually don't even know what I'm going to use yet, so we'll pick that out together. But we'll also need some heavier leather for the straps. I would use something in the mm, 10, 11 ounce, 12 ounce range, firmer like bridle or harness leather, something like that. Something like you might use in a belt. I think that would work really well for the shoulder straps for this. Now, if you don't have that heavier leather around, one other option would be to use just the same leather that you use on the bag except make it two layers thick. You can sew those back to back. And if you have a sewing machine, of course, that's gonna go a lot faster. Although this whole project can be done without a sewing machine. You can use a saddle stitch, just sewing by hand. Uh, it's gonna take a lot longer, but you can definitely do it just by hand. For the straps, I did have some nine to 11 ounce. This is Wicked and Craig harness leather. So I'm gonna use this for the straps. Um, I had previously already cut this up into one and a half inch and one inch straps. So that'll work well for the, the shoulder straps. For the body of the bag though, we need to pick out something uh, that kind of falls into that five to six ounce category and uh, see what we've got here. Okay, I got my leather picked out, but the sun is setting on Flathead Lake behind me, so we gotta take a look out the window. Yeah, it's pretty cool, pretty good, pretty good view tonight. So the leather I ended up digging up here was this olive green Italian vachetta. It's just amazing stuff, sits right at five ounces and it's a little bit more on the firm side, kind of medium firm. I just couldn't pass it up. I think it's gonna work out really well. Also, I said that I think you might need about a side for this. This is a, actually a double shoulder. So a double shoulder, I laid out this pattern, seems to actually be just about the right amount of leather for what we need here. So that should be just about perfect. So the construction of this bag is gonna be really pretty simple. In fact, if you can make a tote bag, you can make this bag. So if you haven't yet watched the tote bag video that I had made, you can certainly watch it here and that will help some of this process make a little bit more sense. And the hardware that we're gonna use is pretty minimal as well. All we need are three one inch center bar buckles like this and then a handful of rivets. I like to use copper or brass rivets. And in this case, I'm gonna use brass rivets just because I think it'll look nice and I haven't really used them much before. And so it'd be kind of cool to see how they compare to the copper rivets that I would normally use. So I'm gonna use a scratch awl to scratch around the edges of the pattern here. And I like to put something heavy on the pattern, anything heavy really, to keep it in place as I go so that nothing shifts as I'm going. And you'll see these openings here. These are actually the locations of the little lash tab pieces here. And so I'm just gonna lightly scratch around in there just so that I have the, the location of that marked so that later on when it comes time to attach the actual lash tab piece to this panel, we'll know exactly where it should land. And also, wherever there's a, a hole, I'm just going to take my scratch all and mark that with a little hole here, and that will just let me know exactly where I need to punch through. Cool. So I think that's everything that we need to cut out of this leather. Everything else is going to be cut out of that thicker stuff for this uh, for the straps. So one thing I don't want to forget to cut out right now are the rivet washers. I'm going to cut those out of this same leather. And that's a good time to use up little strips like this. So I like to use a 5 8 inch punch for the outer diameter and punch out the middle with a little 1 8 inch punch. And these are just going to serve as a little washer to give a little extra material so that there's a lot of good strength behind that rivet so it's never going to pull out. One thing you'll notice about this pattern is that there are a whole bunch of slots and holes punched in everything. And to, to make those holes, I think it's definitely good to have a set of hole punches. Something like this is a pretty economical version and they work well. 
and I'll put a link in the description below for all these tools. Um, but if you want to make slots like this, you could use an oblong punch like this, or like this is a little smaller version, um, or you could just use a hole punch and then connect the, the holes on either end of the slot with a, an X-Acto knife or something like that. When it comes to cutting out the straps, you, you have a few options there. You could either purchase the straps in one inch wide and one and a half inch wide widths from somebody who sells pre-cut straps, or else you can cut them out of your whole hide, either by hand, just using a knife, or you could use a strap cutter like this, which is what I like to do. So on your straps, the uh, two holes on the end are for rivets, those copper rivets, or brass in this case. Those are gonna be 1 8 inch holes. One thing to make note of is that all the rest of these holes, I found that 3 16 works better than 1 8 inch, and those are the holes for the tongue of this little buckle, so I'd use a, a little bit bigger punch for that. So while we're on the subject of straps, one thing I kinda like to do, you don't have to do this, but where this strap is gonna insert into this panel here, it's a little bit bulky with this thick, heavy leather, so I'm going to take my French Skyver and just thin this down and create a little bevel here so it kind of tapers down and just is a little bit less square and bulky as it goes into here. So as you're making this backpack, certainly feel the freedom to make it however you want. Um, you can do any amount of detail you want to do or not do. I'm going to bevel and burnish all the edges just because I think it's a nice thing to do. It takes a lot of extra time. You may just want to skip that all together. You may just want to bevel with an edge beveler and not burnish. It's up to you. So just have fun with it and make your, make your bag just the way you want it. So these little guys are called lash tabs, I think. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know how often I, I lash things to my backpack, maybe once in a while. But what they remind me of, um, I used to have a Jansport backpack as a kid. It was purple. And I wore it to school every day. And it had a little leather patch, you know, in the middle on the top. And it looked just like this. So just ever since then, I thought these were so cool. And when I sort of realized I could put them on my bags, I thought, man, I'm never going to miss that opportunity. So that's why I put them on here. You know, I think they just look kind of cool. And if you ever want to, you know, use some straps and lash a jacket or something to the outside of your pack, that's sort of what you could use these for. So as I burnish, I'm just using the Tokenol uh, burnishing cream and a little bit on the edge. Try not to get it on the on the top surface there if you can. And I just use a little bit of uh, this is like a nylon cloth. You can use canvas or you can use a wooden burnishing stick, whatever you want. And again, this is kind of a little extra, but I think it makes it look really nice in the end. Kind of all the little details come together. So the next thing I'm going to do is to sky the edges where the seams come together. And again, kind of like doing the edges and the, the burnishing, it's one of those things that doesn't have to be done, but it is kind of nice to do because it reduces the seam bulk and it just allows the seams themselves to be a little less uh, chunky and bulky looking, a little bit more refined look. So I'm going to use this uh, skiving machine here, it's a Bell Skiver, 
it's a really nice tool for the job. I'm also going to show you one way that I like to do it by hand in the places where this machine can't quite reach. One thing you'll notice here is, is that the, I did a narrower skive here, and these will be the vertical seams of the bag, so the ones that go up the sides. And then here, I've done a, a thicker or wider skive, and this is going to be the top rolled edge. So this is going to allow me to roll this top edge over, so this is about one inch here. On the bottom, this is three quarters of an inch, and that's the amount of overlap of the bottom panel to this panel. So um, I didn't do an even skive all the way around, and that's, that's some of the rationale why. So that bell skiver works really well on these nice long straight edges and you can do some kind of gradual contours and things but where they where it can't reach are in these corners like this these inside corners so this will be the bottom gusset of the bag i do want to skive that to reduce some of the bulk in the very bottom uh, seam there so i'm going to do that by hand and to do that i'll use this uh, french skiver the same one that i had used to thin down the edges of these straps one really nice way to keep these French skivers sharp is to make a strap that's just wide enough to fit in the opening there and then put some polishing compound or jeweler's rouge on there and then just really really gently lay this in the channel of the uh, tool there and you're not going to pull hard it's a very it's kind of delicate but you're just going to lightly pull that through and that will polish the top side the cutting the top side of the cutting surface there just do that lightly a couple times and then just on a stropping board like this, put a little polishing compound on there and then do the bottom and then as you do it, just roll it up like that. And uh, that will bring that to a really nice sharp edge where you need to cut. Now I'll mark a little perimeter here where I want to uh, skive in from the edge with the French skiver. Well, we're in a pretty good spot here. You know, we've got all of our uh, seams skived and things like that. All of our parts are cut out. Every hole is punched. All the edges are finished. So now it's just really assembly. We're going to be doing lots of riveting with those brass rivets here. If you're not really familiar with riveting, I would definitely want to, want to recommend checking out this video. I'll put a little link here for copper rivets. Of course, brass rivets work just the same way. Uh, and I use these. Let me grab them here. Uh, I use these instead of those double cap rivets. The double cap rivets, sometimes called speedy rivets, um, this is what I like to use. This is a, a rivet that actually has a burr that goes on top. It's a stronger connection. Um, it, it won't pull apart like those double cap rivets can. There's not really anything inherently wrong with those rivets. They can still work pretty well, but I'm gonna use these for this construction just because I kind of like things to be a little bit overbuilt and not have to worry about things uh, pulling apart when they're out in the real world. But before we start the riveting, the first thing I want to do is to, to attach all of these other pieces to the body of the bag, to the panels. So what I like to do is use this double-sided tape. You could also glue it. Gluing is a good way to go. Things like this, though, we're just going to glue or tape around the perimeter. We're going to need them to be open on the inside so that we can put straps in there. And the same goes for these pieces. Only around the outside edges need to be open on the inside. So basically just under where it's going to be stitched is where we need to have some sort of tape or glue beneath it. These little guys, we're going to install the buckles. You kind of fold these in half like this. I'm going to drop the tongue of the buckle down in there like that. And then these are going to be glued or, you know, taped. I like to glue, I'm going to glue these and I'm actually going to run a stitch line around there and that'll look kind of nice. It's a little bit overkill and then this is just going to get riveted to the bag. So you might not be able to see very well, but this is the light line that I scribed in with the awl, and that's the location of the lash tab. So I'm going to use this little rougher tool that's from uh, Tandy, and just really carefully rough up where that's going to get taped. I don't want to go right up to the edge of that line, but just on the inside there by about an eighth of an inch, and that's where I'm going to put my, uh, that's where the tape is going to adhere. This just helps it stick a little better, only for the purpose of staying in place while I uh, sew it. One thing you want to be extra careful about as you're putting this together is take care to notice the orientation of this piece. This is the, the back panel and there is actually an up, the place where you glue this one down or, or 
uh, fasten it down for sewing is not right in the middle. It's actually off center. So make sure you know which end is up and these wider slots are gonna go toward the upper end. So that's important and that'll make everything land in the right spot as you're putting this together. So now we'll head over to here to the sewing machine. So this is a Cobra Class 4 industrial sewing machine. And one thing that I like about this machine is that it has a cylinder arm here. So this is a really heavy duty sewing machine and the cylinder arm is really cool for things like bag making. Um, instead of just, just being a flatbed machine, this arm allows you to actually get things sort of in and around it. I made about three or four bags by hand, hand stitching them. And then I knew I really loved making bags and so that was sort of the tipping point for me where I thought, well, I want to keep making bags. I don't have the time to really hand sew them all. And so I kind of went straight in for the real heavy duty machine. I'd say if it has one limitation though, it's the fact that it can't sew light duty things. It's really just made for heavy duty stuff. getting there so I got these sewn on next thing I want to do is to sew the top rolled edges on the big panels here so I've skived in about an inch here so I'm gonna fold this over and when I do it I like to sew two stitch lines across the top on the rolled edge you can do one I, I think two just looks sort of nice there's no real real other reason besides that so if you want to do just one stitch across the top or not even do a rolled edge you might just shorten that panel if you want just leave it sort of a raw edge on top so this is actually the fourth night that I've, I've been working on this. So I don't know how long it takes you to do projects, but usually I come out here to the shop when the kids are in bed and you know the house is kind of cleaned up. So anyway, this is night number four. I don't know if you've been counting the sunsets behind me, but uh, hopefully we'll get it done tonight. What we have left to do is to first sew the, the rolled edges. Then we're gonna sew these panels together and overlap them by three quarters of an inch. So I skived three quarters of an inch on the bottom of the, of the panel here. So this, I believe, is the front panel. This is the bottom panel. We're gonna put these together using the double-sided tape and stitch them with two stitch lines. And then after that, we'll have those big three panels joined together. And then all we need to do before we sew the side seams is to do a lot of riveting. So break out that 1 8 inch hole punch again. And we're gonna punch through on all these holes here. There's 10 holes to punch all the way through to the back side. And then we're gonna attach all of our straps, like shoulder straps and things in here. Attach our buckle attachments here on the bag. And then after all of our rivets are set, everything will be attached and then finally we'll sew up these vertical seams, sew the bottom gusset, then flip it right side out and our bag is done. So we're kind of on the home stretch here. Okay, so now, before we do the riveting, don't forget that we made these nice little rivet washers. So dig those out at this point. I've actually made them in the past on certain projects and forgot to include them when I actually go to do the riveting. So here's my reminder to you to dig those back out. And those are going to go on the, on the rivet just like this. And then from the underside, they're gonna come in like that. And so that washer is just gonna sit on the inside of the bag. And then here's another reminder. It's easy to get these oriented in the wrong direction. These little guys that have the buckles on the end, we want the buckle, to go up toward, facing up toward this big uh, strap attachment panel. So they're gonna lay on here, kind of like this. So I would hate for somebody to install those upside down, pointing the opposite direction. You want them pointing up toward the, the attachment panel. Okay, so at this point we have three one inch straps, right? And they're all the same length, although two are the same and one is different. So this is the one that's gonna come up and over the top of the bag. So we'll set that one aside. These two others are part of the shoulder straps. So we're also gonna grab our one and a half inch shoulder straps. And at this point, attach the one and a half inch shoulder straps where it comes down at a taper here. I would attach it like this with the one inch strap behind with two rivets. 
So these are gonna build our long straps out of these two pieces. So we'll attach both of those, and then we're gonna attach all of these. So here's our, our grab handle, um, our two straps, and then our single strap that comes up over the top, we're gonna to attach those into the strap attachment panel. And also one thing I think I wanna do before I go much further is on all these buckles, I'm just gonna wrap them in a paper towel and then put a little tape around that, just so that as we do the flipping and things like that, these uh, buckles aren't gonna to tend to scratch any of our nice leather that we haven't scratched up yet. So kind of make note of the direction of these straps. So I have the flesh side coming out this way. This is gonna go roll over for a uh, shoulder strap. This one is gonna come over here like this. And this one is gonna come out toward the front of the bag. So this one we want flipped the opposite direction. Okay, so for this part, we're gonna attach all these straps on the strap attachment panel, and I will put the head of the rivet toward the outside of the bag here. So the head being this part is gonna go on the outside, and then we'll use that doming tool. It's a dome it on the outside, and that'll make a really nice, uh, smooth feeling surface against the person's back who's gonna wear it. So then on the inside of the bag, if this is gonna come through all the layers here like that, on the inside of the bag is where we'll put the, the washer, like that, and then the burr. The washer may be a little overkill in this case since we're going through so many different layers of leather, but just kind of for consistency, I sort of like the look of it as well. So we'll do it that way on these. And so I'm gonna push all the rivets through from the top side and then carefully flip it all over and then do all the setting on the back side. are complete I think didn't forget any little washers on there so at this point we're gonna take this great big thing fold it inside out so the, the good side is facing in I might end up tucking these straps in there too and now what I like to do are use these binder clips and uh, just clip all the way along down to the bottom here so what the first thing we'll do is just sew along this long edge on both sides and then after that we will sew this bottom gusset and then don't put your riveting tools away quite yet. I do, unless you don't, unless you want to. I personally like to put a rivet at the top here after I sew this seam, just to give a little reinforcement to the top corners of the bag. So I've designed this bag to have quarter inch seam allowances. So I want my needle and my seam to be a quarter of an inch in from the edge. So I'll use my little roller edge guide to come a quarter of an inch in from the edge and lock it down and uh, go for it. So as I get close to the end here, I'm actually gonna stop about 3 eighths of an inch before I hit the end. And if you've watched the other tote bag video, you'll kinda know what I'm up to there, but uh, it'll make more sense in a minute. But I'm gonna stop before I get to the end and then back stitch and call it good about 3 eighths of an inch shy of the end there. Okay, so we have our long seams on the sides sewn up. Two things though before we go to the bottom gusset, and that is, uh, one. the first thing is this uh, rivet. I'm gonna do in the corner here. And it's not on the pattern, I'm just gonna pick a spot where it's not on a seam and punch an eighth inch hole on both sides. Then we'll put a brass rivet in there with the washers. And then finally, we'll go, so here's that hole, going kind of split and right in between the seams there. And right on the bottom here, remember I left a little gap uh, before we get to the, uh, the corner. And I'll show you now how I cut that and I'll cut a little notch out there and then when we go to sewing the gusset, you'll see just kind of why I did that. It makes it a little bit easier to get up and over that seam. So I think I mentioned that this is essentially just a tote bag with the handles attached in a different spot. And so this bottom gusset, if you've never made a tote bag like this, the bottom gusset now, this is where it sort of turns three-dimensional, sort of squeeze that together. And the idea as we sew it is to sew along this seam, this mouth where it comes together. As you can see, this is a little bit more firm leather and it takes a little bit more uh, Oh, English to, to get it to come together. The softer the leather that you use, this can be a piece of cake and you can actually do it pretty easily on a flatbed machine. This thicker leather, it's it's a little bit uh, a little bit of a, of a wrestling match. So we're gonna do it on this machine, but um, we're gonna take that table off so it's just the cylinder arm machine that'll make it go a little bit easier. 
So this step can be one of the most frustrating for sure as you try to pinch this together, especially with a more firm tempered leather like this. Uh, just a little reassurance that even if you don't have a perfectly even seam when you pinch it together, just make sure that you're sewing enough leather <clears throat> so that you're not too close to the edge. And if there's a little extra left over, you can just easily trim that off. So I'm gonna do my best to uh, get this all nice and together but it's, it's a little bit of a fight, so don't feel like you gotta have it perfectly lined up. Okay, so a couple things here. That little notch I had talked about is right here, and you can see how that allowed me just to sew right actually underneath, right up into the corner of that notch as I sewed past that seam. So that's a good way to do it. Um, also, you can see I wasn't super even. I got some leftover. <clears throat> I was really fighting this heavier leather, this more firm leather and so it's hard to keep this pulled right together. But with scissors, we'll just trim that off and uh, even it up. And I also made a double stitch line there just to reinforce that. I'm kind of a paranoid person in, in terms of I don't want these things uh, falling apart when they're out getting some hard use. Okay, so we are doing the flip. I've taken all the sharp stuff out of my apron pockets so I don't want to scratch this up as we do it. Um, we're just gonna kind of take our time. So maybe I'll start at the top just kind of push it out from the inside versus reaching inside and, and pulling it out. Just kind of work it little by little. This firmer leather is going to take a while, but usually on a bag this large, you can kind of get away with that. We'll see. Smaller bags that are made of firm leather, boy, they're, they're a real pain. If you didn't already go to the gym today, I think this counts. This leather smells so good. It's pretty amazing how terrible it can look right now, and I think, I hope in about five minutes it's gonna look really good, but it's uh, not looking like much at the moment. It was a fight, this firmer leather took quite a while for me to turn inside out, um, but we got it done, and I think it looks really good. So all I really want from you is for you to download this pattern and uh, try this on your own. And then send me a picture. If you get to make your own, send me a picture on Instagram at Claridge Leather. I'd love to see what you make. There's a lot of, lot of ways I think you could customize this, modify it for your own needs. I, this is very basic the way I did it, but on the inside you could have added maybe a laptop sleeve pocket or some pencil pockets or things like that. Um, here, where we got a, a center bar buckle, you could do a tuck lock. I think that would be a really nice way to make it uh, a little easier access, although this isn't, isn't too bad either. And uh, anyway, make it your own. Send me a picture. I would love to see it. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.